5.1 uh, so we're given a Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve uh, for a certain reaction and then we have Q on our on our y-axis we have P on our x-axis and then we have some point R right and then 5.1.1 says uh, P and Q are the labels on the axis. What quantity is represented by P? Um, we know that on the x-axis of the Boltzmann uh, distribution curve, uh, we have kinetic energy, right? So 5.1.1 uh, will be kinetic energy. And then 5.2.2, we are supposed to give the name for Q, uh, which is the number of particles. The number of particles. Yeah, this is uh, the same uh, curves we use when we determine the factors that affect a reaction rate, right? And then if you haven't done that, uh, look at the description. I'll put a link to a video where I was explaining that. And then 5.2, R says line R uh, represents the minimum energy required for the reaction to take place. And then 5.2.1 says uh, write down the term of the underlying phrase. A minimum energy required for the reaction to take place uh, that's the activation energy activation energy is self-explanatory because activation energy activation uh, so to say and then 5.2.2 says how will the shaded area on the graph be affected when a catalyst is added choose from increase decrease or remain the same now obviously it's going to increase right increase and then i'm going to explain that in a second uh, actually 5.3 <laughs> asked me to explain why i'm saying it increases um when you had a catalyst um it provides an alternative path right so let me just write that down alternative path of lower um activation energy activation energy so after we have an alternative path of lower activation energy then more particles uh more particles uh, will have um enough enough kinetic energy uh, to react right yeah to to react and as a consequence, uh, we will have more effective collisions, more effective collisions. And then, yeah, the reaction rate uh, gets high, right? And then you have your four marks. When you add a catalyst, the alternative path, there will be an alternative path of lower activation energy. So particles that previously didn't have enough EK, now they do, and they will form reactions, right? And then the more the number of reactions, the more the number of effective collisions, and then the reaction rate will go up. And then we move ahead to 5.4. So we have a reaction between powdered calcium carbonate and excess hydrochloric acid uh, it's used to investigate reaction rate at 25 degrees Celsius and then we have a balanced equation down there and then um, several experiments are conducted using the same mass of impure calcium carbonate and then uh, with different initial concentration of dilute hydrochloric acid um, then the graph represents the results and then Okay, if you say that you should assume that uh, there are impu impurities that do not react, okay, fine. And then 5.4.1 says controlled variable. Uh, by control variable, they mean the variable that is constant. It's not being changed in any way, right? So if you pay attention to details, uh, when I was reading that statement, it said same mass of calcium carbonate. I just highlighted it in blue on the left hand side. Same mass of impure calcium carbonate. So for 5.1.1, 5.4.1 will have um, mass of 
C A C O three, and then that's uh, the one option you have. And then the other option you have is the temperature, right? They didn't say anything about the temperature, so you can go ahead and see that. And then uh, five point four point two says, uh, let's have a conclusion for this investigation. Okay, look at the graph. Look at the x-axis. As the initial concentration of HCl is going up, the average rate of production of CO2 is also going up. And CO2 is our product, right? So that means that uh, concentration is directly proportional to reaction rate. As we increase the concentration of HCl, uh, the average rate of production of CO2 increases. We have more CO2, right? So that means uh, the reaction rate is higher. And then let's move ahead to 5.4.3. It says uh, the calcium carbonate in 6 gram of the impure sample reacts. So we have Ca. CO3 and then uh, that which is pure is 6 grams, right? And then uh, they say that it reacts with um, HCl, obviously, uh, of concentration 0 0.03 moles per decimeter cube in 26 minutes. So we have delta T equals to 26 minutes, right? And then uh, 5.4.3 goes on to say, use the information in the graph to calculate the percentage purity of the calcium carbonate. So we want uh, we want to calculate the mass of the impure calcium carbonate. And then after we do that, we can go back and calculate uh, the percentage purity. Then they say, assume that the molar gas volume at 25 degrees Celsius is a v uh, molar gas at uh, 24,000 uh, centimeter cube. So, okay, let me just write down the equation down again. So we have calcium carbonate plus 2HCl giving us, uh, okay, let's ignore all the other products and just put CO2, right? Because CO2 is uh, what we're interested in because that's what we're measuring. Um, so the question is saying, uh, let's calculate uh, the mass of CaCO3, right? And then what do we have? So for CaCO3, we only have uh, the mass of the pure substance, right? And then for uh, 2 HCl, uh, what's the information we have for H HCl? We only have the concentration. And then for CO2, we have the uh, molar gas volume, uh, we have the average rate, uh, we have the reaction rate, I'm sorry. So we have the reaction rate and then and then we have the time uh, of the reaction. So it seems like CO2 is uh, what we can use to calculate everything else because this is where we have the most information. So we can use uh, the reaction rate uh, to calculate uh, the volume of CO2, right? And then after we have used the reaction rate to calculate the volume of CO2, uh, we can use the volume of CO2 uh, to calculate the number of moles of CO2. After we've calculated the number of moles of CO2, we can use uh, the number of moles of CO2 uh, to calculate uh, the number of moles of uh, CaCO3 and ultimately calculate at the mass. Uh, the thing about this question is that uh, there's no formula I can give you to use in every situation. You have to read the question and understand it and then you can take it from there. So we know that uh, for a gas, the reaction rate is equal to the change in uh, the, the volume divided by the change in time. And then uh, if we take uh, this bullet point at the top, uh, where HCl is uh, 0 0.03, the average rate of production is 50 centimeter cube per minute, right? <coughs> so we're gonna have 
50 equals to the change in volume divided by the change in time. We are told that it takes 26 minutes, so we're going to have uh, 26 here. And then if we cross multiply, uh, we're going to get <coughs> we're going to get uh, the volume equals to 50 multiplied by 26, which is going to give us 50 multiplied by 26. Uh, that is 1,300 uh, centimeter cube, right? So now uh, we have determined the volume of a CO2, like we said. The second step is now to determine the number of moles of CO2. Uh, that is given by number of moles equals to the volume divided by the molar gas volume, which is equal to the volume we just determined is 1,300 and then the molar gas volume is 24,000, right? And that is equals to, uh, so we have uh, 1,300 divided by 24,000, uh, which is given as uh, 0 0.05417, um, right? Uh, moles. So now we can use the number of moles of CO2 uh, to determine the number of moles of CaCO3 that reacted using uh, the the ratio of the balancing coefficient, right? So from our equation, uh, we know that uh, the number of moles of CO3 uh, divided by the number of moles of uh, CaCO3 is equal to 1 divided by 1, right? Because those are the balancing coefficient. So the number of of moles of Ca CO3 will just be equal to the number of moles of CO2, right? So that will be also uh, 0 0.05417 moles. So now uh, we've done step two to calculate the number of moles of CaCO3. Ca CO3. Now we can uh, take a formula and calculate uh, the mass of uh, CaCO3. So we know that the number of moles is also equal to m divided by the molar mass, right? And then we want the mass. So the mass will be equal to the number of moles divided by the molar mass, uh, which is equal to 0 0.05417 uh, multiplied by let me check the number of moles of CaCO3. Uh, that is 100, right? You can check it on the periodic table. So we're going to have, um, let me just put that in the calculator real quick. And then that will be equals to 5.417 grams, right? So now we have uh, the, the mass of CaCO3 that reacted and the mass of the impure sample right so to find a uh, percentage purity we're gonna say it's percentage purity um equals to uh, pure substance uh, divided by uh, impure right uh, the whole substance so this is going to be equals to 5.417 divided by 6 uh, which is let me just put that in my calculator real quick uh, which is equals to 0 0.9027 and then after that you can just multiply that with the hundred so that you get it in percentages so that will be um, 0 0.9027 uh, multiplied by 100 uh, that is 90.27 uh, percent